suppose Harold comes back. He's not coming back till tomorrow morning. No, but suppose he comes back tonight. He's mad about his aunties. What do you think he'll say if he comes into his room and finds out we've stolen this? Oh, don't <laughs> dramatize, darling. We haven't stolen all his furniture. Just the sofa, the table, <laughs> the lamp, the three chairs, the bowl, and the vase of flowers. That's all. And the Buddha. That's more valuable than anything. <laughs> oh, do stop worrying, darling. Well, you don't know him. He won't let anyone even touch his antiques. Oh, look, we'll put everything back just as soon as Mr. Bamberger leaves. Now, stop being mean. Well, frankly, I don't know if we should have done it. I mean, anyway, Harold or no. Well, why not, for heaven's sake? Well, the ruble's just divine now. Look at it. Darling, <laughs> George Bamberger is a multi-millionaire. He's lived all his life against furniture like this. After you've stolen little bits, I'm going to impress him. He's coming to see the work of an unknown sculptor. If you ask me, it would look much better to him if he found me exactly as I really am. A poor <coughs> artist. Uh, well, it might touch his heart. It might, but it certainly won't impress Daddy. Remember, he's coming in, too. As if I could forget. Why you had to invite your master father tonight, I can't think. No, oh, not again. Well, it's too bloody much. He's going to be persuaded I'm a fit husband for you just by watching some famous collector come in here and buy some of my work. He doesn't deserve to have me as a son in law. He only wants some proof he can earn your living. And what in Bamberger doesn't like my work? He will, darling. Just stop worrying. The trouble with you is, Daddy calls a determined defeatist. Ugh, the more I hear about your daddy, the more I hate him. I loathe military men. Look, all you've got to do is stand up to him. Daddy's only a bully when he thinks people are afraid of him. Well, I am. But you haven't even met him well, yet. It doesn't mean any difference. Oh, don't be ridiculous. What can he do to you? Well, for one thing, he can refuse to let me marry you. Oh. Yes, sweet. Mm. 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 Tell me, have there been many before me? Thousands. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? No. Well, what about that girl in the photo? She lasted about three months. What was her name? Clear. And what was she like? Oh, she was a painter, very honest and clever, and, and just about as cozy as a steel razor. When was the last time you saw her? I told you, two years ago. Well, why did you still have a photo in your bedroom drawer? It was just there, that's all. Give me a kiss. Oh, tell me something. Did you like it better with me or her? Like what? what? Sexy bit. in a moment. Put a record on. And it better be something for your father. What does he like? He doesn't like anything except military marches. I might have guessed. Wait! I think I've got some. Uh, the last record on the left, the orange colour, it's called Marching and Murdering with Sousa. This one? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Man of the Cold Street Mars. I have a deal. Put it on. How do you switch it on? Uh, the last one up on the top. Let us pray. Oh God, let this evening go all right. Let George Bamberger like my work and buy some. <laughs> let Carol's monster father <coughs> like me. Oh. And let our neighbor, Harold Gorringe, never find out that we borrowed his precious furniture behind his back.
Look in the bedroom, will you? Oh, I haven't finished in here yet. Sure. Well, I just remember there's some fuse wire in there in the drawer where you found the photograph. Go and get it, will you? Oh, I don't think there is. I didn't see anything. So don't argue. Just look. All right. Keep your hairpiece on. I'm sorry. I got something. There's some there. That's <laughs> all. I missed it. What about the ledges? We'll have to mend it in the dark. Please hurry. Yeah. Oh, God. How dreary it is. <laughs> Carol? Darling? Pia! <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you were in Finland. But you've been hardly gone six weeks. Where are you speaking? The air terminal? No! No, that's not a good idea. Not tonight. Well, I'm afraid I'm just terribly busy and I can't get out of it. Oh, it's business. There's nothing here except your dreary socks, I told you. Well, try the other drawers. Look, I can't stop now. Can I call you tomorrow? Or where will you be? I, I know it's just around the corner. That's not the point. Look, you can't come around. Something has happened in the past month. I can't find anything, Brittany. Look, I have to go. I can't talk about it. Has it got to do with wanting us? Of course it has. But you just can't expect things to stay frozen, can you? There's nothing here! Haven't we any matches at all? Oh, uh, stop wailing! No, no, not you. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye. Who's that? Just a chum. Did you find the wire? I can't find anything in this. <laughs> We've got to find something. <laughs> well, I'll try the pub. Perhaps they have some candles as well. <laughs> Oh, is there something special <laughs> happening tonight? It could be some 
But everything has to go back exactly as it was when your father and Mr. Man were me. I swear. Oh, Miss Burnbull, you're an angel. Do you have a drink? Oh, oh, that's right. You don't drink. Well, have a bit of lemon there. At that, I want to refuse. Yeah. That's, that's oh. supposed to be sculpture, eh? Well, it's not supposed to be daddy. It is. Well, they, they look like garden implements. I'd like a return in the soil. That's not a very good thing, Daddy. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jumper. Just because you're fine. I wish you were more than Right, there's no use in me wasting this. You may need it. Oh, don't worry, Miss Furnival. We will be back in a moment with the candles. Well, then I'll leave. Of course, I don't want to be in your way. Oh, not at all. Uh, you can't find anything in this. If there's candles there, I don't know where they are. Did you get the electric people? They said they might send someone round later. How much later? They don't know. Oh, what a lookout. Not a bloody candle in the house. A, a dead millionaire to show sculpture to you and your monster father to keep happy. Lovely. Good evening. This is my father. Uh, good evening, sir. I said, well, fancy you being here all this time. Well, uh, well I was uh, just expecting some monster neighbors. Like, you know, neighbor monster, monster neighbors. They just rang up and said they'd come look around. Well, 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 well. Well, well. Well. <laughs> you seem to be in a spot of trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's just abuse. Nothing really. We have them all the time. It won't be the first news I survived, and it definitely won't be the last, I suppose. But in the meantime, you've got no matches, right? Right. No candles, right? Right. No basic efficiency, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Right. Basic efficiency, young man. I mean the simple state of being at attention in life rather than at ease. Understand? <laughs> well, I'm certainly not at ease, sir. What are you going to do about it? Do? Don't echo me, sir. I don't like it, you know? Like it. Right, sorry. Now look, you're here. <laughs> we have an emergency on our hands. Anyone can see that. No one can see anything. That's the emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Spare me your humor, sir, if you don't mind. But think of the situation objectively, right? Right. Good. Uh. <laughs> Throw them! <laughs> Solution? Light! Oh, very good, sir. Weapons? <laughs> Matches? None! Candles? None. What remains? Search me. <laughs> Torches! Torches! Brilliant! Routine? Well, <laughs> where would you find one? The pop. Well, what time is it? Quarter to ten. You can still make it if you hurry. Thank you, sir. Your clarity of mind has saved the day. Well, get on with it, man. Yes, sir. Back in a minute. Thank you, oh, stop that at once! <laughs> Harold Gordon. 
orange. This is Colonel Melkit. How do? <laughs> How do you do? And this is Miss Carol Melkit. Harold Orange. Hello! Uh, you've got no candles, I suppose. Would you believe it, Colonel Brother Hans, silly me? What the devil did you do that for? Well, I'm saving your wick, Colonel. You may need it later, and it's failing fast. It's all right, I've got some matches. Some matches? Yeah, I've right, got the right end. Ah! Oh. What was that? A draft. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> stays right in this room. It's impossible. Cross currents, you know. All houses are full of them, and it's almost a permanent feature in this house. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> What's up with you? Nothing. Here, yeah, have you got a dead body in here or something? No! Are you been drinking? No, of course not. <laughs> What's up with you? Dangerous! What? Uh, dangerous? Uh, we, we can all die! Naked flames! Hideous accidents happen with naked flames! <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. Well, it's something I just remembered. They always tell you that the fuse box and the gas meter are in the same cupboard. They are here. Well, what about it? Well, electrical blowouts can damage the gas supply. They're famous for it. Do it all the time. And you've got to avoid naked flames till they're mended. I've never heard of that. Me neither. Well, take my word for it. It's fantastically dangerous to have a naked flame in this room. Ring's absolutely right. <laughs>
hysterical, I see. Oh. Brinsley! Well, how the hell can we do it? It's no use, they can't hear you up there. You hold the phone. So, so. Serve them drinks, keep everything going in the dark. Just leave it to me, I'll have to try to put everything back. It won't work. It's dark. <coughs> Brinsley! Coming, sir! I'm just getting some empties to take to the pub. See what you like, the boys. Touch! Trust me, darling. That's a double over Coming, sir. Coming, sir. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh Murray, Colonel. Help is definitely on the way. Well, hurry it up, man. Carol will give you drinks. If Mr. Bamberger arrives, just explain the situation to him. Would you like me to come with you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, stay and enjoy oh. yourself. You must be exhausted after all those poops. <laughs> and nice gin and lime will do wonders. Shan't be a minute.
fresh toffee like. It would look fancy on a girl after age with twas her looks. <laughs> exactly, if you know this song. <laughs> she says to me, Mr. Govich, I've been cheated. No. Her very words, cheated. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just how exactly as that occurred, Mrs. Levy. <laughs> well, she says, quite by chance I took this vase over to Bill Everett, to Portobello. And he says it's not what you caught it at all, Chinese and very rare. He says it's a piece of 19th century English trout. <laughs> just, just he answer I keep calm. I always do when I'm riled. Yes, she says it does. And I'll thank you to give me my money back. Grateful. What did you do? Well, I counted to ten. And then I let her have it. <laughs> In the first place, Mrs. Levis, I don't expect me customers to go checking up on me honesty to hand my back. In the second place, Mrs. Levitt, Bill Thinking it over for a moment, Colonel. Uh, it was a very perceptive remark you made. 
made. <coughs> what? I couldn't agree with you more, sir. Well, what's your answer then? I told you it was a very perceptive remark you made, individual, you know? Not everyone would have thought of that. Almost we. I don't care. Are you trying to be funny? Uh, I'll, I'll try anything once. Well, I must say this is getting a bit unpleasant. It's getting dreary. Now, quiet, Dublin. Let me handle this. Now, what's that to handle, sir? Oh, look, you here. If you think I'm going to let my daughter marry a born liar, you're very much mistaken. <laughs> marry? Well, that's the idea. <laughs>
What's it just come up? I always thought she was ugly. For one thing, she had teeth like a picket fence, all yellow and sparky. <laughs> she had bad skin. She had nothing of the kind. She did, I remember it perfectly. It was like a new pink wallpaper. An old great crumbly paper underneath. <laughs> yes, you're quite right, Mr. Gorringe. Now, I hardly ever saw her, but her skin. It was a strange color, as you say. Oh, not soft. Like the skin of a young lady. That's if she was a young Ah, oh, that's it, cause. Oh, rather lovely. Very lovely. And this is disgrace. You knew I never liked a princess. She was too clever for her. Oh. Ah! What's wrong? Are you right? What the hell was that for, Harold? That wasn't very funny. What do you mean? Well, it certainly was not the kind who just slapped me. But what was it, sir? Clear. <laughs> Rubbish. She was beautiful and and kind and loyal and witty and charming and adorable in every way. You told me she was as cozy as a steel razor blade. I did? Oh no, no, it doesn't sound like this. You said to me in this room when I asked her what she was like. She was a painter, very honest, very clever, and just about as cozy as steel razor blade with my sense of Mr. 
No one in the world kisses like you. Brynn, <laughs> I miss you so badly. I had to see you. I thought about nothing else these past six weeks. Brynn, I made the most awful mistake walking out. I think we've known each other for four years. Can't you trust me for just an hour? Of course I can, darling. You don't want me down there. Right. Then I'll stay here. I'll get undressed and go quietly to bed. And when you've got rid of them all, I'll be waiting. That's a terrible idea. I think it's lovely. A little happy relaxation for us both. I'm perfectly relaxed. Friendly! Too solemn for day, too sweet for night. Come not in darkness, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Unprecedented good people here, at last, is incest in Iron Bird. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, well, well done. Oh, I thought I'd be living next door to a genius. You should charge your rent sums for this. I hope it is very, very expensive. Uh, of course, of course. How much? Uh, 50? 500 guineas. Oh, so, very cheap. But then what is cheap, old dear? There's no way possible to relate beauty and money. Oh, an equation in which one term, reality, and the other, unreality, cannot be considered. Of course not. Uh, will you uh, have it, Ben? Me? Uh, darling, don't you think they're rushing things a little? Perhaps you would like to see my main work. It's in the studio. Oh, no. no? As Moses discovered, it is sufficient to glimpse milk and honey. One does not need to loof them down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> well, well. Well? 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 Would you like it then? Oh, very much. Oh, 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 oh. For 500 guineas? Oh, certainly. If I had it. <laughs> According to the Sunday Mirror, you must be worth at least a hundred million pounds. <laughs> well, the Sunday papers are notoriously ill-informed. Oh. According to my last bank statement, I was worth 96 pounds, two shillings. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you've gone broke? No, I mean I've never had any more. No, oh, look here, sir. I never, you know, supposed to be eccentric, huh? This is getting a bit tedious. Millionaires? <laughs> but who do you think I am? My God, man, you must know who you are. Rather 
I'll swear to you, Miller, I dare say, what a over middle class and stuffy, what? Oh, no, sir, not at all. Excellent sense. Listen. Oh, absolutely, sir. Cats, swines, unspeakable. England is the last refuge of the scoundrel. Oh, are you pulling my legs, sir? Oh, well, certainly not, sir. I wouldn't know where to start. Oh, well. Oh, Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britain, never, never, never shall be slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. You must be Miss Clear's father. Miss Clear? I don't understand. <laughs> well, I never. So you've gotten it last. Well done, Miss Clear. I never thought you would. Not after four years. <laughs> oh, forgive me, sir, for speaking out of turn, but you must admit four years is a long time to be caught in one woman. Four days is stretching it a bit now, guys. Oh, this is puny, please. Four years? Well, yes, dear. It's been all that and a bit more, really, hasn't it? And, of course, it was just in time. It's getting a bit prominent, you love bun in the oven. Oh! oh! No, miss, I don't mean that's why I popped the question. Of course it's not. He's <laughs> always been stuck on you. Told me so not one week ago in this room. Mrs. Punit, he says. Mrs. Punit, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep the rest of them. Miss Clear will always be on top of eight for me. Oh, I says, but what about that demi top bit Carol, the one you're always telling me about? Oh, there, he says. She's just a bit of a nice bridge candy floss. Couple of licks and you back. Did you say four years, madam? Yes, Colonel. Four years in this room. I know that voice. It's clear.
minutes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>
be back with a circle on that blade. This is the end of our relationship, Princely. We won't be speaking again, I don't think. Astoundingly, instantly, 